All right, here we go. Week one of the high school football season. Welcome in, everyone, to the Final Score Podcast. Greg Swatek of the Frederick News Post Sports Department here with you. We are presented by PFP, Players, Fitness, and Performance here in Frederick. And we welcome all of those who are watching this discussion on Facebook. Uh, welcome in. Hope you enjoy. And I... Uh, here to help me break down the start of the 2018 Frederick County football season are Frederick News Post sports writers John Cannon and Joe Ferraro, and our man Kyle McFadden, who's all over the place uh, in, in the state of Maryland covering football. Who do you work for now, Kyle? Myself, I guess. Yourself? And, and when, what's your website? KFAD.com. K-F-A-D-D dot com <laughs> yeah because people are interested because uh, you used to work for Maryland Sports Access and, yep. and people love your content so we want to let everyone know where they could find it and I want to start guys with everyone's preseason top five we should point out we, should, we need to start that Kyle I think nailed three of the four state champs last year was it yeah it was three of the four and then who, who, got who, who, Fort who, Hill who, wrong who'd you miss you got four, Dunbar beat yeah. Fort Hill in a close game right? very close game so, so, so you almost went four for four right it was so close Greg right yeah. so you had you had uh, you had uh, Damascus in 2A yep you and had, Wise yeah. in 4A you had Wise in 4A and then of course you had your Ligonor Lancers that uh, wide open 3A in, race in, last in, year in, in 3A you correctly yeah. you correctly pegged it um, and I, it looked bad for a while there because they were down 19 nothing to Milford Mill. Yes. Um, Without and, their uh, best playmaker. On, on Joey, offense in, in Joey, Joey Felton. Felton. Yeah. And, um, and, and then they came back and, and had, they had the great final drive, uh, two fourth down conversions on the final drive. It was one of the best – was that the best high school football game you've ever seen? I've ever uh, seen. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. It, 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 was, it was, was certainly up there for me too. Crazy. I mean, and, and just how, un- how unlikely was that? championship for Ligonor because they lost pretty uh, handily to both Oakdale and I mean they, they were the 3A champs yet they were the, probably the third best team in this great football area we call Frederick County <laughs> yes yeah so let's, let's get everyone's preseason top five uh, uh, Kyle do you want to start and then we'll go to Joe and John or, or working our way from five to one or uh, one yeah to five. well <clears throat> all right well, let's 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 build up to the drama who's everyone's okay. we'll, we'll, we'll go around who's everyone's number five team my mine, mine is Middletown same i'd i'd i would have to pick the knights too okay yeah joe do you have a number five team boy close between middletown and walkersville i'm gonna go walkersville five okay and how about you john uh, walkersville five as well. Walk- walkersville five number four i have walkersville kyle walkersville w- walkersville yeah joe middletown 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 okay three i would put tuscarora there i, I think they're a solid number three T- talented team they're going to put it together one of these years this this could be the year uh a, a promising freshman quarterback tuscarora is my number three team i had tuscarora at five <clears throat> but i'm gonna go ahead and put them at three and then i'll explain why later okay joe same tuscarora Tus- three. Tuscarora. three so that that unanimous. seems like a unanimous unanimous choice now here's where it could get <laughs> here's where the coin flip happens here's where it could get tricky um, number two, I have Oakdale. There might be some disagreement here, I and mean, we could explain why. I want to get everyone to okay. explain why they chose the top team that they did. But my mine is Oakdale. Joe, yours is mine is Linganore. Okay, I would say one B, but since we're going by <laughs> two, number here, two, number two, Kyle, uh, Linganore, Linganore. Okay, <laughs> Linganore too. All right. Um, I will explain my I, – I have Ligonor number one, and I will explain that choice, and then I will let you guys each go around and offer your thoughts on why you have Oakdale. Ligonor is the defending champs. I, I just think they have more depth than everyone. Seven returning starters. Joey Felton will be back. Ryan Lay is is uh, an inch taller, the quarterback, and he's close to 40 pounds heavier, so he's going to be a nightmare to tackle in the open field. I, and and the, they, they love all of their running backs. They have four or five running backs. I just think Ligonor's depth – um, is slightly superior to Oakdale's, although Oakdale might have more front-line talent. I mean, Colin Schlee's a better quarterback. They probably mm-hmm. have the best running back in the county in Simeon uh, Zabute, the best kicker in Justin Ritter, uh, great linebackers in uh, Luke Carey and Mario Goings. There's a lot to like about Oakdale. I could easily put Oakdale at number one. I, I mean, I see the case. But, but mm-hmm. Ligonor, having won the title last year, having brought a lot of kids back, I give them the slight edge over Oakdale this year. Uh, but we'll go around and uh, Joe, why why'd you put Oakdale number one? You know what? I, I just think that, you know, defensively and, you know, I, I don't think across the county you're going to find anybody as good as Walkersville was last year. I think Oakdale may be just a, a tad better. 
on the defensive side of the ball with, and you mentioned a couple of the linebackers there, uh, you know, Linganore, they've got some people back, you know, such as uh, Jackson Ambush. Uh, they lost uh, Joe Kolick, who was uh, kind of a jack of all trades, did everything, a little bit of everything for them, just very... Uh, very high football IQ, uh, you know, on defense and offense. Uh, I just think, uh, you know, I think across the board, I think what we're going to find is that we're, we're splitting hairs a little bit. But, but yeah, I, I think uh, Oakdale's a, a tad better defensively. Kyle, I saw you had a scrimmage, Ligonor yeah. scrimmaged, uh, a pretty good uh, Williamsport team. Mm-hmm. They, they, they have a kid, a, a lineman going to Clemson. Mm-hmm. Ligonor dominated the scrimmage, and we, and we were talking about this at the scrimmage. I said, who do you like, Oakdale or, or, Oakdale or uh, Ligonor? You again trotted out the one A one B phrase, but but you did say you did say Oakdale over, over your alma mater yes. Lancers. Ex- explain why. Well, I look back at last year's game. I know this may sound lame, but I mean Linganor they lost by three touchdowns, pretty much. I know that Bryce Domaly is not back for Oakdale. Logan Carey's gone. I know it's a completely different season, but um, I think that that. On defense, I think Oakdale is a little bit ahead of Linganore right now. I saw them scrimmage Quince Orchard, and they look tremendous on defense. Uh, they shut down Quince Orchard, a very good team that has made it to the Class 4A final the past two years. Um, I think on offense, Linganore's got more weapons to work with, and I think they're much farther uh, than what Oakdale is right now. But um, if I had to go preseason top five, I would put Oakdale one just because of Colin Schley and then Simeon and that defense has looked absolutely tremendous right now. And then for Linganore, I think the ceiling is there to be a top three public school in the state. I just need to see a, just more from them as the year goes on. Yeah. And John, I know you wrote about uh, Oakdale for our uh, high school football preview, and we all here know how good Colin Schley is. He's a, he's a great athlete going to going to Kent State uh, to play football. But but one of the things you came back and you, and you said, man, can he really throw the football? And, and until you see him do it, and until you see him watch him play, I mean, it, it doesn't really strike you, right? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been here since 1992, a long time. And I was trying to think back of the last time I saw a quarterback that good come out of Frederick County. And the only name I keep coming up with is Zach Mills, who who went to Penn State and, and played for those great Urbana teams. He was a lefty, but, I mean, um, a lot of similarities. He was an excellent athlete, as is Schlee. You know, Schlee was our basketball player of the year last year. And... Mills was a standout basketball player. He ran track as well. But uh, just it's, it's, the arm is the first thing you notice, but there's so much else he has going for him. The question mark is he did lose his top two receivers from last year, but uh, I get the feeling that will work out pretty well uh, for him <laughs> this year. And they're hungry. I mean, they – you know, they, they went down in the first round of the playoffs last year. Most of those guys are back. And I'm not saying Lingenor isn't hungry. Okay. And, in fact, they're, but they're, and actually, if anything, there's pressure. I mean, is, is their pressure greater than Oakdale's hunger? You know, it's – Pull, pull that, pull that mic a little closer to you, John. Yeah. I, I, th- I think your levels are a little soft. So, mm-hmm. I mean, how many how many playoff teams will Frederick County have this year, guys? Kyle, do you have a guess? Um, I don't have a full grasp of the one A West, two uh, A West. I think Oakdale's a lock. I think Walkersville will make it, and I think Middletown has a shot. It's just for them, like Middletown, they really have to keep an eye on what like Liberty's doing, and maybe even like a Seneca Valley. Or maybe even Williamsport, you know. So um, I think it, at least two in 2A, maybe Catoxin. Um, in 3A, it's Linganore. I think Tuscora makes it back this year. Um, Urbana might have a shot in the 4A North. So we're looking at, what, a handful of teams, maybe six, five ish you you brought up five or six. You brought up Catoctin, and they went eight and two last year, and they didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, they play in an e, they play in a region that's almost as tough as the two A West, uh, yes. the the one A West. You got Fort Hill, and then Allegheny. Yep, Southern Garrett made it, I, I believe, mm-hmm. last year, and then and then Boonesboro, a team Catoctin beat. They got in last year just because of the way the, the funny way the points work and stuff like that. How good is the one uh, A West uh, this year? Because Catoctin should mm-hmm. be pretty good again. Uh, I know that Fort Hill lost a lot. I don't know what the campers bring back uh, from Allegheny. So I don't really have a, a great like grasp. What, 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 I think what, if they get the eight wins, I, I think they will make you, it you this year. It, oh, yeah. It's not quite as rugged as it was For sure. last year. In, yeah. in Southern, do you, do, you know much, do you know much about what, what they bring back or anything like that? Not so, much, no. They, they should be pretty good, though. I mean, they, they always have uh-huh. good athletes at that school. Joe, did you have a hunch on how many uh, teams – 
Frederick County might have? Or I, I'm thinking the, the, the four to five range. Uh, yeah. You know, I think, what, two each in, in 2A and 3A, certainly not out of the question. And then and then Catoctin has a, has a good chance. Okay. Mm-hmm. What I, what I want to do now is I want to break down each team um, – uh, one by one, uh, because because we wrote about them all uh, in the paper. I think our last two previews uh, go uh, in, in in Thursday's in Thursday's paper, and that'll be Walkersville and Urbana. But but let's talk about each team one by one. Offer offer, offer some thoughts, and then at the end of the podcast here, we will uh, we will offer some playoff predictions and stuff like that. Kyle, we'll lean heavily on you for that because because okay. well, number one, you you had the great you had the great uh, picks last year, and, and number two, you, you know the rest of the state a little bit better than than, than all of us. So. Before we get into the team breakdowns, though, let's take a quick break, and and uh, we'll, we'll have a quick word from our sponsor here, PFP, Players Fitness and Performance. Okay. <clears throat> Coming back in three, two, and one. We're back here on the Final Score Podcast, our annual high school football preview edition. Thanks to all those listening and all those watching uh, here on Facebook. Right now, we're gonna we're gonna take each Frederick County team one by one, we'll, we'll, and, and, and offer some thoughts and and, and some perspective on, on, on each of the teams. And we'll start with the uh, public with the private school teams, excuse me, uh, MSD and St. John's. Uh, John, you ha- you've had a look at MSD both in practice and uh, in their first game. How do the Orioles look? Uh, fast as usual. They have a bunch of speedy guys, and um, you know, last week their opener, the team they were playing, just had uh, some small guys, and they just couldn't keep up with them or weren't even as big. Just got outmanned. Uh, they're, they'll, they'll win their usual minimum seven of or eight games, if not more. Right. The thing we would like to see for MSD is them to play one of the county schools. Uh, one of these days, I, I think, I think that would be a great test for them. And, and, and they might even have a chance to, to, to win one of those games, too. So it would be, be great to see MSD uh, play, a, play a Frederick. Or a, What's their or schedule a, look like? Or a Catoctin or a Brunswick. Um, it's, they play the uh, the other deaf schools. or what, two more deaf schools? that they I want to say there are two other ones. Um, like last week, they played a team from, uh, oh boy, where were they from? It was Delaware, I guess, Georgetown, okay. Delaware. I didn't even know there was a Georgetown, Delaware. Um, you know, and they were kind of a, they were a home school team. So they play a lot of home schools and, uh, and uh, that type of thing. I don't know if they have any public schools scheduled this year. I don't have their schedule in front of me. And, and it looks like uh, their senior running back, Eric Long, is, is, is a great player. They have an experienced quarterback, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who, who's, their, who's their quarterback? Oh boy, I gotta think of his name here a second. Uh, you're, you're oh, I, I, I put you on, I, 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 I put you on the spot. Yeah, he's like a pitch room too. Uh, Eric Long's the one that jumped out of me last week. Right, I mean, he I, just he's, he's fast and shifty. I mean, because they lost Brady Perry from last year. Actually, although they had to play most of the year without him anyway, and, and Eric stepped in for him. And uh, I think I, I know Perry had more breakaway speed, but Long is fast and he's shifty and he's got a little size to him. And they have a sophomore too, Shepik. Uh, what, what, what was his last name? Uh, e, uh, oh, e, uh, e, e, Ethan Shepik. I'm putting I'm, you on the spot. Where do I get the worst? I'm getting my names. That's okay, but but but. Yeah, I mean, uh, did they pass and run a little bit, or were uh, pr- primarily running? They yeah. ran, uh, yeah. There were a couple passes thrown. There might have been one completed, but not. Right. They didn't have to pass a whole heck of a lot. Okay. So, and, and they're always in the running, uh, of course, for the for the national deaf prep uh, championship. Uh, St. John's, uh, Joe, you 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 had, you had a, a chance to talk to them. How, how did the Vikings look? I did, did have, haven't obviously had the chance to see them in action, but uh, their, their quarterback, Wylan Herrick, uh, seen him practice a little bit. Yeah, he can uh, he can chuck that football, and uh, everybody you know physical skills you know can you know can wow you, but everybody's just uh, as impressed with his with his leadership and and just his uh, ability as a sophomore to to really. You know, take ownership uh, of this offense. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of the underclassmen who are picking his brain, looking up to him, and and uh, you know, Coach Hayes, uh, you know, believes that you know if he were to to go out and and try out for any public school, he would have a, a shot at gaining the starting job. So yeah, if uh, if I have a chance to go see him, I'm, I'm actually. Looking forward to seeing uh, Wylan Herrick uh, in action. Is St. John's talking about maybe competing for the MIAA? Oh, they'll, they'll be in the again. mix. Yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll be in the mix again with Annapolis area Christian. I, I definitely think they they've got a shot. And what what, what are their strengths? What, what will they hang their hat on this season? Uh, you know, I, I think their their offense uh, has has a chance to to really be explosive uh, this year. In the past, you know, very run heavy you know between the tackles you know smash mouth football this time you know with with Weil and Herrick you know they they've got a chance to to really open things up on offense yeah 
Brunswick. It was good to see them uh, jump back into the mix uh, last season after after uh, two zero and ten seasons. Um, that they they went five and five last year uh, playing playing their independent school schedules. John, I think you had to look at uh, Br- Brunswick under uh, uh, Jerry Smith, uh, who will be in his uh, second year as is the head coach there at, at his alma mater. Uh, what you what you see and learn from Brunswick? Uh, first of all, uh, they return a lot, but they have some big guys um, up on their front line. I mean, they have uh, I want to say three guys like over three hundred pounds. Now I don't I don't know if they're the fastest fastest guys in the world but you know for a 1a school and the schedule they play those guys could you know could cause some trouble move some people around and open up some holes and uh, they return a fair amount back don't ask me all the names right <laughs> I, I, won't. I, I i shouldn't put you on the spot like that and, uh, rory lewis in, is in the first place. okay it you, takes me a while you got you got that right. so um uh, but but can you can you sense an increased confidence i mean do you, do you feel yeah. like that the, they feel like they could really hold their own against their their schedule this year yeah so. i mean look for an improvement i mean five and five i mean i mean seven and who knows i mean them they then they play contacton i don't know when that is on the schedule it's usually the end of the year yeah it could be an interesting game and there could be stakes so Ky- uh, kyle is brunswick in the 1a west um, playoff yes. mix uh, uh, it, uh, just with I, their schedule I, or I, I, I have the sheet are, up are there, are, right are, there, are, there, are the outside contenders um I think they're going to have to get seven wins at least. So you think seven will get will will, will, will be the to be number? in in the conversation? Okay, to be in the mix, right? I think eight. I mean, like you said, Katakin last year had eight and they missed the playoffs. So, mm-hmm. kind of depends on what the but, other but, schools but, but, do. But you sense that Fort Hill and Allegheny are going to take a slight step back, right? A little bit, okay. I think. It's hard to tell up there, right? Because I mean, Fort Hill always schedule, always reloads. They're like a, they a, do. Yeah, they have a nice feeder. And system and their schedule is a little bit different than other teams around the state. Back in the old days, they used to take turns. It seemed like one year one was strong and the other was so so, and then you know it switch and switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that used to be. I mean that that game drew thousands of people to. I to, went up there, uh, yeah. two years ago, and it's like a college atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I was at the Army Navy game in 2015, and that's probably the most comparable in terms of a high school to college environment. That was probably the most. Comparable like just in terms of the people and the excitement yeah, it's, it's a great so, little stadium too a greenway yes. greenway uh-huh. avenue stadium so mm-hmm. so it's like a perfect environment for like fall yes. high school football so friday night lights football right there that's, yeah exactly that's, that's the whole town is. comes up they, i mean they, they share the it's they share, actually they share the stadium, on a saturday right? afternoon or, yeah, okay yeah. yeah yep it's uh november 3rd i think this year Right, and, Don't hold me to that, and there's a chill in the air, so it so it feels like yep. it feels like football oh, because yeah. it you got a fall chill and and, mm-hmm. and everything it's it's like a perfect uh, perfect setting uh, for a game. Winter chill up there that time of year. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, our winters have been getting a little warmer, but but but, <laughs> but maybe it'll dip into the 40s uh, yeah. uh, for that game uh, this well, year. You talked about but. Brunswick. I mean, I, I think they've got an outside chance. But one thing I'll, I'll say about Brunswick is that last year I, I saw them play in, defensively uh, up front. You know, where, where the battles won, you know, Ben Nidro, Terrence Jackson, a couple of guys who are just you know, freshmen and sophomores. So, you know, they're, they may be on the outside looking in if, if that's the case. Come next year, they're going to be someone to, to look out for. They're, they're going to be good for another couple of years down the road. Those are the names. Those are two of the names. Joe knows the names. So I'll, ask, I'll, I'll direct my questions right. about the names. I'm not going to know not all of them, though. <laughs> right. I'm no, not going to know all of them. Right. Yeah, I mean, Brunswick, I mean, Jerry Smith, I mean, he's brought the program a long way in just two years, and just his passion and his energy for the program is infectious, and I, I think that's rubbed off on the players, and kids are getting excited, clearly, about playing football in Brunswick again, and and, mm-hmm. and, and, and it's always been that way, but but Brunswick, of course, is, is a baseball town, so... Um, so you have, to, you, have to, you, have to, you have to get those kids interested in, 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 in playing football, too, so... Well, you guys mentioned Catoctin, and I think Catoctin's going to be pretty good. I mean, I, I, I watched them practice, and, and, and they looked the part of a... They look like a good football team. I mean, they have nice size. They they have they have good athletes. They have what I think is critical in high school football. They have an experienced quarterback. Uh, Christian Michael will be a a, a three year starter at quarterback for them this year, um, and I, I think he's really grown. Um, uh, I, I think he's developed the confidence to pull the ball down and take off and run. Um, they they do have to replace some great running backs. They had uh, Joey Fogle and Nathan Rednowers who combined for. Um, for over 2,000 yards, I think, last year. And when you throw in Ethan Schreiner, who also graduated, I think it was close to close to 3,000 and almost 30 touchdowns, basically between those three. So they have to replace all that, so they have to find some new playmakers on offense. But but I, I think that's where Christian Michael will really come in, and, and he'll, he'll – 
he'll, he'll be a more confident passer this year, a more confident runner. And I, and I, and I think um, that first game with Boonesboro is going to be pretty big when, uh, when it comes down to the playoff chase. The winner of that game is going to have an inside track. Catoctin thought they did last year by beating Boonesboro in the opener, but, but again, the math didn't work in their favor, uh, partly because of, the, of their independent schedule. That probably softened their, softened their final playoff points uh, a, a little bit. But I, I, I look for Catoctin to be a, uh, a, a contender uh, f- uh, for sure in, in, in the 1A West, and, and they'll have another uh, very good season. So, uh, a- a- any thoughts on, on, on the Cougars guys before we move on? All right, Fr- uh, Frederick, hi, Joe. Uh, you were you were out there to look look at the cadets, right? I was, I was, yeah. So you know they they've been through a couple of what one and nine consecutive one and nine seasons, but uh, you know they they've got everything on the outside now settled into place. I mean, they've with the, with a the new school up, you know, they've got a, a, a brand new gleaming weight room, uh, a, a beautiful uh, lighted practice field. And so they've got all these things going for them, you know, whereas last year, you know, they had to take a, a half mile hike out to McCurdy just for just just to practice. And, you know, before the season started, you know, there, there they were, you know, lugging around, you know, some some old barbell weight plates uh, across, uh, you know, a grassy hill and uh, which, which served as, as their practice field. So, right. so really, it's, it's not uh, not the best of environments when you're, you're trying to prepare for the season. But 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 now, uh, kind of the, you know the words out there, you know, no excuses. So they, they've got you know quite a few people that experienced those one and nine seasons who are you know really getting after it, uh, you know, working hard. And uh, I, I think you, you'll see you'll see some improvement uh, huh. from from them. You know, playoffs. You know, we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. You know, with, with uh, you know, with the schedule they have, but uh, I think they'll they'll improve. Who are some of the playmakers they'll they'll, they'll be? Yeah, K- this Kasai year? Barnes, yeah. their quarterback. You know, v- very good leader. Uh, his uh, his coach uh, Kevin Perry has really encouraged him to to be more like uh, actually. You know, Kevin's an Eagles fan. Uh, he, he wants them to be more like Carson Wentz in, in terms of just the intangibles. The the, the leadership, uh, you know, the communication and so far, so forth, the accountability. Uh, Keymarsh Matthews, a wide receiver, uh, DeAndre Boyce at running back, they're, they're all back. So so, the, so these are the guys, they, they've they been through it. And and also uh, Kasai Barnes, he's done a really good job in doing some, some recruiting within the school, uh, you know, getting some guys from the basketball team, which over the years has been, you know, very good over the past four, five, six years. So uh, Nate Osei, uh, Jimmy Kill, He's he's gotten those two guys, two two athletic guys, to come out and, and play some football. So so yeah, we'll 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 see how it goes. But don't you admire Kevin Perry on some level because because he's he's been going through these difficult seasons oh, ab- too, and, and, and he's kept the spirits high, and, and he and he mm-hmm. seems to be really trying hard to, oh, to, yeah. to get some traction and to get something going. Yeah, yeah, no, so. no he's he's a ter- he's a determined guy. I mean, he's he's from Pennsylvania, you know, football rich Pennsylvania. So you know, the passion for football is, is there, and it's not going away regardless of what happens if he puts together six straight one and nine seasons i don't see that happening like i said i think they're going to improve but yeah he's uh, he's pretty passionate when it comes down to football yeah ligonor we've talked about them a little bit uh, definite contenders uh, to, to repeat as uh, class 3a state champions uh, seven starters back on offense i, I think they have five i want to say on, on on defense um, Ryan Ryan Lay is bigger. I mean, I, I can you imagine being a defensive back trying to bring down a six five, two hundred twenty five pound quarterback <laughs> um, uh, in, in the open field? I mean, everyone talks about it and is still thinking about that great quarterback sneak to keep their state title hopes alive on that on that game winning drive in the state final. And then what did he get like? 11 10 and a half 11 yards half of football uh, right yeah like and yeah. And, th- and this year he said he's going to make that run about a 15 to 20 yard run it, it, it won't be quite so close uh, last year it's just by bulldozing yeah kids over. Uh, Davon butler is back i yeah. mean there, there was some chatter that he might not be back in the offseason but he's back he's gonna he's gonna miss uh the first four games while he tends to some some off, some off the field stuff but they really like their their running backs don't they kyle yes uh, yes yeah. they, they got like seven ball carriers that can get maybe over 10 touches a game yeah you have you have xander xander mcclure yeah. yeah he'll be a sophomore this year he's he's quick yeah he's shifty yeah uh, yeah you, you have johan yes right and, uh, and ben musselman joey brusha big fullback ran for 120 yards and one half first williamsport right um 
Jackson Ambush, who's going to Albany, uh, plays linebacker. Um, trying to think. They have, they have, uh, tell us about the Mount St. Joe's uh, transfer. Oh, Cole Mitchell, six five linebacker, uh, big kid, flies to the football. Um, he's he's a sophomore, but he plays like he's a junior or senior. Um, hard hard hitter. Um, he he can get off the rush quickly. Yeah. Uh, so he's, I think he's like at, everything they're, you they're want. Looking at him on the defensive line too. I, I, in a I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And of course they might have the, the 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 biggest playmaker in the county and Joey Felton, who just Joey recently mm-hmm. just recently committed to Yale. Maybe maybe the fastest uh, fastest player uh, in, in the county. And he's been working hard on running routes and, and getting off jams at the line of scrimmage and stuff because he's not he's not the biggest guy. He's so. the quickest in terms of first step explosiveness that I've seen in a while. Right, um, and I've seen a lot of kids from St. Francis to St. John's to Dematha. I mean, Joey Felton is as quick as it gets. And he seems like he has a plan. For, I saw him play a couple times last year, and he, he's very aware of where people are. So he's he's uh, he's looking as he gets that. But he, of course, you got to catch the ball as well and everything. But he's very good at being aware of where defenders are and finding making his marks. range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Rick Connor said he wasn't so worried when they were down nineteen nothing in the state final. He was worried when Joey went out of the game in, in, in the state final. Like when when he went out, Kyle, and they were already missing guys like Luke Freeman and and, and other players. Yeah, uh, Jake Zudall, I don't think played in that game. Um, I mean, <laughs> did you think Ligonier had any chance to, to come back and it win was, that game? It was done. Yeah, you know? I mean, like, how do you even? Well, I go back to the final drive before half. If they don't score there. I think it was Joe Kolick who busted open in the right. open field. Yeah. If they don't make that play, it's it's done. They don't even make a comeback in that game. Right. That's what uh-huh. Rick said. And then, then they had to score again. He said they yep. had to score at the end of the half to sort of get back in the game. Mm-hmm. And then to make it sort of anyone can win this thing, they had to, I mean, just, they, they had to score again before Milford Mills scored. All of the factors that went against them, from losing Joey Felton to having half your defense out uh, to – having to convert a fourth and 10 uh, on the second to last drive or the last drive, I think. Um, I think they had a fourth and one and then they had to convert uh, inside the red and, zone. And Davon got uh, it by the nose of the ball. Exactly. They had, they had like I mean, two there was barely converted fourth downs you know, on, on that All of these final factors drive. that went against them, it's, it's just... Everything yeah. kind of fell their way, right? Yeah, e- exactly. So, and then they have a great chance to be back last year because three A mm-hmm. is is not quite as strong as it used to be. I mean, three A the three A West used to be the region. Oh man! And, and, and now now it's the two A West. Yeah. So, and that's a perfect segue into our next segment because Middletown is in the two A West, <laughs> and they were a victim of like like Catoctin of of just playing in the wrong region at the, at the wrong time. I mean, Middletown was seven and three last year. And uh, uh, and they had some bad luck because Liberty in Carroll County had ha- had a had a great season. And again, here we go with the point system. Just just the way the cookie crumbles with this thing. Mm-hmm. Liberty got the nod over Middletown, and I don't think anyone believes that Liberty <laughs> would have beaten Middletown had they had they actually played in the game. And then Liberty, Not of course, goes to, goes to, goes to Damascus and and, and gets uh, run over at Damascus, predictably. So so Middletown again. Uh, the, 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 look at their three losses last year to Ligonor, to to Oakdale, and to Walkersville. I mean, no, pretty no, sure they were in all th- of those games. Th- and, and three of the best teams in the state. The Walkersville game, Walkersville thumped them. Okay, I mean, that was that was thirty five nothing. But 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 I think they had a Joe. They had a second half lead against Oakdale, and they had, then, a, they, they had uh, yeah, they had uh, fourth quarter leads against both Ligonor and Oakdale and I was at the Oakdale game you know they get a a, a big uh, you know stop on uh, on defense and they're up a touchdown uh, you know they, they they have the ball and they need an, you know another first down or two and and the ball game's there but 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 you know Oakdale to their credit made a, a good defensive stand and and you know they, they get the ball back but no they had the ball with about five minutes left and and the lead so, so yeah, they were you know a stop uh, away from beating or, or, Oakdale, or, right? From being from beating Oakdale, and, yeah. and that, that would have clearly put them in the playoffs. Had yep. They done that. I was at the Ligonier game, and, and Middletown honestly should have won that game. I mean, they dominated the third. They dominated the third quarter of that game. The, the, I mean, the the ball was in Ligonier's end for it seemed like the entire third quarter, but but the Ligonier defense just wouldn't give up a touchdown. Middletown had to settle for like four field goals in that third quarter, mm-hmm. and instead of turning those points into 
seven, I mean, they were settling for three. Mm-hmm. Those drives, excuse me, into seven, they were settling for three, and that, and that ultimately cost them a game. It was a three-point game, Ligonor won, um, uh, 29 to 26, I believe, and that was Ligonor's really first big win of the season. That was the first game they won that, that maybe that could have gone the other way. But, but yeah, Middletown, I mean, and then Walkersville, I mean, at, there's no shame. Every, everyone was getting run over by, by Walkersville until, <laughs> until the very end there. And uh, there was no shame in, in, in getting uh, beaten by them. But but tell us a little bit about Middletown Joe. I, I know their quarterback is back, Reese Poffenbarger. And again, quarterback play is important when you have a returning starter at quarterback. That, that, that'll help you out. Absolutely, so. and he's, uh, he's he's very smart and and accurate. You know, you're not going to get any any you know boneheaded you know decisions uh, out, out of that position. And so you know he he did graduate a couple of uh, big targets uh, from last year in Mark Evich, Zach Demolik. But you know from what Reese tells me, he's got a uh, you know a set, a set of receivers receivers headed by Jalen Dotson that he's uh, he's been throwing with pretty much all summer. And so he feels that same comfort level. So, you know, we're looking for big things. And they, they bring back Isaiah Dowry as well. And, gosh, I mean, I, I didn't see a whole heck of a lot of them. I saw, saw him play against Oakdale and Walkersville. But, boy, I mean, this is a guy who – saw him in practice. This is a guy who, who really seeks out contact whenever he gets the ball. So – and uh, pretty pretty big uh, offensive line. So, so yeah, so they're going to – they're going to score some points. Well, when you think about Middletown, you think about the running game. I Absolutely. Mean, and, and, but, and that's but, what it has been in the past, for right, but, run heavy. But, but, but Poffenbarger kind of gives him a passing element, does he not? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, right. he's going to be throwing for, you know, between, uh, you know, 150, 200 yards uh, a game. I, I could see it happening. Right. Somebody told me inside the program that it's going to be kind of a flip this year. They're going to pass – there be more balance, I guess. They're, they're maybe maybe I pass, so. maybe pass to set up the run uh, more? Uh, Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Middle, Middletown's going to be pretty good. I mean, I, again, uh, I, th- I think we had them four. All of us had them four or five in, in the Frederick County. You can never count top them out. five, I mean, and, and that could that could easily be flipped one yeah. way or the other too. So, mm-hmm. so Middletown. I, let's, let's talk about Oakdale. I mean, <laughs> uh, is, is is this the year that Oakdale finally gets it done? I mean, Kyle, you and I have talked about this at length. Oakdale had the offense to score points against Damascus last year. Damascus couldn't really stop the pass. I mean, if they're not in Walkersville, reg- if they're not in Walkersville's region, and, and they don't have to play Walkersville twice, mm-hmm. I mean, do they beat Damascus with their with their passing game? I think they can, you know. But Coach Wallach, I talked with him this past week, and he's very high on his defense. And Coach Stein is also very high on his defense. No, I, I, meant, I meant last year. I mean, if, had, had they played last year. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think about that I, I, still, I too. The, I, set the question, I set up the question um, poorly. I think about that, too. What would happen if Oakdale would have played Damascus? Um, Here's what it comes down to me. It would have been a high-scoring game. Oakdale would have scored a lot of points. But I think Damascus, Damascus would, would, have would, have, would have definitely moved dominated, the ball. Would, they would have, Damascus would have dominated Oakdale along the line of scrimmage. Their line was so good. I right. mean, like, put it this way. They held Walker's load to, like, two and a half yards per carry. Right. Okay. Don't, don't you think that would have been, like, a 40-something to it would th- be 30-something a high, 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 high 20s game mm-hmm. if, had they played last year? But I knew that Oakdale only put up, what, 19 on Walker's load? Right. Not even? I, don't, I, uh, I can't they, recall. They, they it was did, 13, did, wasn't it? 16 in the second game, and I believe it was 19 okay. in, in the first. Okay. So. I know that Walkersville had, uh, you know, Jacob Wetzel back there, and then Josh Pollitz in the secondary, two of the best safeties in the state, in my mind. Um, so definitely a better secondary than what Damascus had. Though, even though I've knocked their secondary last year from Damascus, they were good. They were a good group. They came up clutch. But it seems like you versus could, you could move, you, you but could score points Wooten, move the ball. They on did move passing, the ball right. on them in week 10. They had a very good passing attack, just like Oakdale. So, yes, that that's possible. Um, I mean, you can't bet against Damascus. That team last year, you can't bet against them. I learned the hard way. They put all my right. all my tweets up saying that Walkersville has a chance in the locker room, and they even showed me afterward too of all of the tweets that were lined up on the wall. And right. So, let me ask you. So, so let's say Oakdale goes ten and zero. So they they do what we expect them to do. Go ten and zero this year. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. This year. Now Damascus goes ten and zero. So is the game still at Damascus? Is yes, that because gonna... they play more four A schools, and therefore that's more uh, points. Even though they're, even though they're not strong four A schools in Montgomery no, County, like a yeah. Magruder. No offense to them. I know they have some coaches who follow me on Twitter, but I mean, you know, they're going to beat them. Right. Um, 
And then, like, they, they I play, think like, Walter like, Johnson's in 4A. They, so don't, they don't play Quince that. Orchard. They play Seneca every year, but Seneca's up and they down. They used so. to play Quince Orchard, and then, yeah, then they right. took them off their schedule, which is weird. Right. Uh, I don't know why. So, right. um, so if Oakdale goes further, you know, if they make that regional championship game, if things play out the way they think we think they will, they're going to have to go on the road anyway and, and play. They're, yes. D- D- Damascus is just a tough if, place to play. If I'm Oakdale, I actually want to play at Damascus. Why? If I'm a kid, because I think I can end that streak. Mm. You know, and well, I have what, something what, to talk what, about. What, what is what, what is their, I mean, Damascus, 42 in a row. So they haven't the, lost at home in, since 2013. Okay. My senior year of high school. Right. So I think they've won 42 in a row overall. So they're closing in on Urbana's great 50, 50 in a row mark. I think Wise is in Wise, the 42. I, yes. I think they're I think they're at 42 yep. as well. Mm-hmm. Have they each won three state titles in a row? Yep. Uh, because Damascus is going for four, mm-hmm. and Wise is going, going for four. Four, four in a mm-hmm. row. Okay, so each could surpass the Urbana marks uh, this year. So that's that's something to definitely keep track of. Mm-hmm. But uh, last year, I mean. Playing at Damascus, I, I I think this final school Damascus would have beaten Oakdale like forty something to maybe twenty something twenty eight for, for, forty forty four to twenty eight or something like it would have been something a, it, like it, 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 it would it would have been, been it would be good game right but I mean down the stretch you would have to give it to Damascus right we all we all expect Oakdale to be good this year mm-hmm. uh, they might get their shot at Damascus um, we all know Colin Schley is is, is going to be great but mm-hmm. who but the question facing Oakdale to me is how do they replace Bryce DeMalley mm-hmm. and uh, Logan Carey at receiver? He said basically by committee. He didn't expect to have – what did DeMalley have, like, over 50 catches last year? Right. He said he's probably – he's not going to have anybody like that. Dispersed and, over yeah, maybe three. Five, maybe about four or five yeah, guys. Three, four or five yeah, the statement yeah. I think he said – Kurt Stein, the coach said, was I think the production will be exactly the same, but it will be more spread out, spread out over mm-hmm. – over, but, but just the pres- the physical presence of Bryce. <laughs> right. and, and, and Logan Carey, who was, like, 6'2 and 200-something mm-hmm. pounds, too. I, I, mean, I saw a, a, a first glimpse at it versus Quince Orchard and they're going to need to get through some lumps in the first few weeks. Yeah, for right. sure. Yeah. Even though Quince Orchard might be the best secondary they see all year long, they're still going to have to work through but, some but lumps. But Kyle, you were raving about Oakdale's defense. and I know They're very I, good. Oh, right. they impressed me. I, 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 know, I know John fast like the defense quick, too. And they, so. pursue, and they fly to the ball. They get multiple people to the ball. So, so can the defense make up for some of those uh, shortcomings on offense for sure. maybe uh, this um, year? I mean, a big thing too is they don't have a whole lot of kids who go both ways. And even if they do, they have a guy who spells them. So I like that a lot about Oakdale. Um, now, the run game. Now, we, we talk about Sabute. The McCoy boy, the, um, mm-hmm. their coach was talking about as well. Is that first name? Is it Wyatt? Well, why, why, yeah. Wyatt. Uh, he, yeah. was, he was injured at most, if uh, if not all, of last season. I mean, did he get much playing in the scrimmage you saw? I was kind of curious. Uh, uh, Oakdale uh, didn't have any numbers, so he, it was he, really he, tough. He carried the ball quite a bit last year, though. I, I, I expect him to do the same this year. Uh, uh, one kid that stood out to me versus Quint Sorcher was uh, Blake Baxter. He looked really good. Yeah. Um, and then Simeon, he was just lightning fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, he looks really good. Right. Um, like, really, really good. So, um, definitely one of the best backs in the state this year, for sure. Yeah. He should get 25 touches a game. Uh, you okay. just have to feed him the ball. And, and they will, but they've always had a bit of a committee approach at running, mm-hmm. b- at running back, too. I mean, you so. have to give him the ball right. 20 times a game. And, and I wanted to say this, too, like, Colin Schley could run too. Like he he he, yep. he he gives them a running element too, just with his with his great athleticism. But 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 Kurt Stein said this preseason he wants them to hang in the pocket a little bit longer and mm-hmm. feel the rush, and he wants them to go through all of his reads and progressions because number one he's going to have to do that in college. Yep. Number number two he's not going to be able to outrun all those guys when, when, when he gets to Kent State. I mean Kent State's playing uh, Arkansas and like Alabama o- o- over the next two years. So, so it's not going to be as easy for Colin Schley to outrun some of these defenders that he does here in high school. So he wants them to feel that rush and hang in there and go through his reads mm-hmm. and, and, and not be so quick to, to take off. So, so that, that'll be something to watch, too. Like, how long does he hang in the pocket and, 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 and when does he take off? So, mm-hmm. but, but, the, but the game everyone's circled already, October 6th, I believe. I, I, it's Ligonor at Oakdale, and, and that, that should be the game of the that year um, in, 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 in Frederick Very County. Very good game, for sure. In, in Frederick County this year. On to the T's, uh, Tuscarora and, and Thomas Johnson. We'll start with TJ, and 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 they had a really tough year last year, but 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 they closed the year on 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 a high note. They beat their our tribal Frederick, and that gave them a little momentum coming into the season. They have a new coach in Bobby Humphreys, a former player there. So it's again 
I, I would compare it to Jerry Smith at Brunswick. Uh, he's passionate about the program. He's dedicated uh, to, to, to turning it around. And I, I, th- I think they will slowly but surely. Uh, TJ uh, has a couple of transfers that they're, they're going to rely on heavily. Shimon uh, uh, Jenis f- uh, from Tuscarora, the receiver, he's there this year. Uh, Dustin Thomas, uh, run, running back at Frederick, is at it, is it TJ this year. They have a returning quarterback in Matt Folks, so uh, a, a, a big lineman in Bennett Commander. So, I mean, the pieces are in place for TJ to be to be a much better uh, team this year. And they've changed so. their offense. They're going to run a different type of offense. Is that they're, right? they're, 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 back, they're back in their normal, traditional wing T offense. Last year, they ran the triple option exclusively last year. It didn't really suit their personnel. The, the coaches and most of the players didn't feel. So they're back in a better offense. And I think they've tweaked their defense a little bit too. So I don't know how many wins TJ is going to have this year, but um, but I think they will be no matter what the win total is. I think they will be a much improved team um, from a season ago. Tuscarora is this the year that they could finally put it together with with the talent that they have? I mean, they, they they're bringing in they they lost a three year starter in Christian Edwards at quarterback, but 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 Brian uh, uh, Jester. Uh, as, a, as a freshman, I mean, he's a 6'2", 200-plus pound freshman. I mean, imagine that. Who's been around the program. He, he, he knows the offense. He knows the defense. He, he does quarterback camps uh, in, in the offseason. Some of the coaches here in Frederick County have, have worked with him at, at some of these quarterback camps. So is, is, so is he the great hope at quarterback for Tuscarora? And do they have enough playmakers around him with, with, with Jordan Addison, uh, Division One recruit receiver, uh, Aris Hilliard, who Kyle loved uh, in, in the, in the oh, Milford Mill game he last year, he did. Oh, Four, what do you have? Four hundred plus total yards in that first game last year. It's so, close. It's real close. Um, uh, he's back at running back, and 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 they and they like their linemen too. So there's no reason to think that Tuscarora can't compete in in in, in the three A West and be right there, right? Right, Joe. That'll be a factor, and you know, especially especially, and they get Milford Mill again to start the the, the season. You know, they. They get a win over them. Oh, you know they're gonna Statement. they're gonna forget a lot of the things that happened last year. Uh, you know, losing games in the in the final minutes, and in one case, what the final six seconds. You know, they lost to Polly on a touchdown pass where a guy goes over two Tuscarora defenders and and pulls it down. And, you know, a lot of uh, stuff that challenged them. You know, mentally, and that's that's the one thing that that. Um, Vince Ahern is really preaching with his team, you know, the, the, the mental toughness part of it in the later stages of the game, you know, do you have uh, what it takes to push through when, uh, you know, game's up in the air, you're you're not quite there physically uh, as opposed to where you were in the first quarter, you know, can you can you push through? And so, but I, I think that, that opener, that's going to that's gonna say a lot. I've had the chance to talk to Vince Ahern, too, and he's talked about staying healthy this year. Last year, they had a lot of guys get banged up and nicked up, and he felt that cost them some of those games, in addition to the, just the conditioning and the getting tired and fatigued at the, at the end of the game. So he's pulled back this year in practice. He's mm-hmm. talking a lot about recovery periods, yep. reco- recovery days. There will be days where they, where they don't do much on the practice field because yep. he wants to keep everyone. He said the focus is on health this year, and that's because he got burned by, by, by all the injuries last year. So, so if if they can stay healthy and if this new quarterback could could adapt quickly to the speed of the varsity game in high school, I mean, I I, I think they could be right there and, and 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 definitely be a playoff team. Now, Kyle, he told me about Milford Mill a little bit, and mm-hmm. Milford Mill, uh, the, the the transfer laws everywhere are kind of getting out of control. But he said in Baltimore, it can kind of get a little wacky too. And he, oh yeah, he said Milford Mill has a humongous He's line l- l- line now. I, f- I forget his name. But there's this big dude that came over from Mount St. Joseph. Yeah. Big kid. Uh, but no. He Milford, said that he said they're like over like well over six feet and two hundred pounds across yes. across oh, the yeah. line. Oh yeah. They got they have so. a big line. Their linebackers are probably some of the fastest in the state, if not the fastest. A Devin Shell, is he uh, back? Yes. Desmond Shell's or, back. De- 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 Desmond, excuse me. Uh, he'll be starting middle linebacker and he'll be getting probably over 20 carries a game so and, and for uh, those that remember he had the amazing across the yep. uh, back across yes. the field run against Lincolnor in, in, in the state final it was, it was a factor throughout that game so mm-hmm. so yeah. Milford's got athletes all over the place uh, now last year going into that Tuscarora game I was there it was at Milford on a Saturday afternoon and you expect the Tuscarora to win that game uh, maybe not in that fashion. I think they won by four touchdowns. Uh, this year, it's 
everybody's picking Milford. So if Tuscora can get that win, Joe, like you said, it's definitely going to send a statement to them. Um, even if they if they don't get that game, if they show some signs of life and some bright spots, then maybe take those down down the road. But it's definitely going to be a, a good measuring stick for both teams on where they st- stand week one. This game usually doesn't happen, this kind of game, maybe until like week four or five. But When you look at class 3A across the state, Milford right right, right there. At the, at the yeah, top they're the right behind Linganore. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. Right behind Linganore. They got athletes all – all across the board, they got a new quarterback this year, Vershawn Holmes, a sophomore. He was actually going to start last year for them, but he wasn't quite ready. Um, so he's ready this year. He can throw the ball, can run the ball. Um, yeah, they're going to be dynamic. Is, is it another 1A, 1B situation in 3A with, with, with them and Lincoln Orr? I would say so. Um, I think the Milford coaching staff and the players are definitely have more – um, to work for than Linganore this year and, 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 they're, and they're, every other team in the state. I mean, if you lose that way, I mean, that's all they've been thinking about the I, whole summer. That's what I was going to say. All they've been thinking they're about. They're the hungry team now. They're, they're, the, they're oh, the team on the chase. They have been getting after it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and they've been keeping themselves, from what I've seen, in check because emotions, you lose that way. You can kind of get a negative kind of energy from that. But no, I, I think they've harnessed it the right way. And it's going to be fun to watch this year. Uh, Milford went 12-0 and against teams outside of Frederick County. And they went 0-2 right. against <laughs> both Frederick County teams last year. Statement for Frederick so, County football, right. Yeah, no, I, I always say this. I think Frederick County football from top to bottom has the best football in the state. Yep, better, better than uh, uh, Prince George's County. Better, oh, better than Montgomery yeah. County. Yep. So. Milko is just very top-heavy. Right, even Down. even Howard County is is, is definitely oh, yeah. pretty good. So, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, all right, moving on to Urbana, uh, John. Uh, you right. you saw Urbana and they're under in their second year under coach uh, Brad Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's I mean last year he was new and he's got that that spread offense which was just radically different than what what those guys were used to last year. Now this year they're they're more used to it. Uh, they returned their quarterback. They started a freshman last year yeah, in Kyle, Kyle Howell. Howell's. Right, yeah. Now, he, uh, the Coach Wilson kind of hinted that you know there might be a competition there. Um, Stephen Drabeck is back, who had done some quarterbacking two years ago and a little bit last year. Um, he say, so he said there was going to be a competition between those two. I don't know if he was just saying that or, you know. But uh, at any rate, they have a lot of guys back from on yeah, that yeah, offense. Seven yeah, starters. Good receiver, too, and Brendan uh, Schmitz, right? right? He's yeah. their top receiver yeah. last year. Yeah. And uh, so they're, they're, they'll, they'll be better. They were three and seven. Um, and uh, yeah, they had t- they struggled with the the strong Frederick County teams. I mean, they got blown out by a bunch of them, and um, they might still lose this year to those types of teams. But maybe maybe it'd be a more respectable game, and then maybe they they get some more wins, pick up some more wins. What what does the four A North look like, Kyle? With, with with Urbana, it's a hodgepodge of teams. You got Paint Branch in there, who they return ten starters on offense. They look good. You got Howard in there, who's won the region the past three years, I think. You got Sherwood in there. They have a new coach this year. Um, you have Perry Hall from Baltimore. You just have a hodgepodge of teams. How many wins will Urbana need to make the 4A North playoffs, do you think? Six, get them in, seven? Well, I have Paint Branch winning the region, in my mind. I think they get to nine and one. I think Howard's going to be nine and one. Um, so there's two teams with nine wins and then it, it honestly depends on how the other counties shake out i mean the problem um, for a band is they they play i mean they have to play everyone they have to play i, I think have, except walker they have to play middletown they have to play Ligonor. they have to play oakdale I they're going to have to beat middletown you can pretty much you know not trying to count them out but i mean beating Ligonor or oakdale is going to be a very tall order so we'll say two losses right there i'm Maybe six wins could sneak them in as the four seed. Maybe. I don't know. It depends on what everybody else does. So Right. But, I mean, at some point, I just remember when Brad Wilson coached at Westminster, and I don't, you got you saw that team as well. When that offense, when, when those kids know it and they start doing it, it's something something yeah. to see. And I remember they tore apart Langenor at Langenor one of those years, and then some kids set a state record for touchdown receptions against the defense. defense. No. Yep. And Westminster uh, should be pretty good this year, right? They now. are going to yeah. be pretty good. We will get to them. But Urbana, I think I texted you this the other day. It's not that they don't have talent in their 
like district or their like area of kids it's just most of them go to private schools you have mm-hmm. the top recruit in the country uh brian, brian brzee brzee he's supposed to be there uh damon Clowney, a four-star brian's at damascus defensive end um he's at saint francis big piece on their defense and then uh jalen hampton who plays for Georgetown Prep. He is one of the best running backs in the country. He should be also at Urbana. So, I mean, if you put those those guys on the Hawks, they're going to be a really good team. But mm-hmm. they don't have them. So, um, yeah, this is like how it is nowadays with the private schools poaching kids from – Yeah. From the, yeah. Last but certainly not least, the team that people could be overlooking this year in, in, in Walkersville. I mean, the, the great two-year run ended, the 25-game uh, winning st- uh, streak ended at Damascus last year and what was a truly a, a heavyweight battle. I mean, uh, oh, there, there, there was really one play, one big play that entire game. I mean, it was just a battle in the trenches with, with, with both lines playing great. Uh, Walkersville missed and they lined up wrong. Uh, I believe it was in the third quarter, and uh, John Allen Ferguson, the Damascus quarterback, uh, hit him with a uh, with a quarterback draw, sixty four yards, I think. Something it, like it, that. It, it, it set up. Uh, did they? Th- was that their, on their touchdown drive, Kyle? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that set up? They set up the yeah. lone touchdown of the game. So that 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 was the one big play in the entire game. Yep. Um, and then Damascus went on to win the battle of the state champions, the 2A champ and the 3A champ from the previous year. Uh, 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 excellent game. It, it lived up to the hype. It, it wasn't Mill for Mill Ligonor, but, um, <laughs> but, but, but it was still, it was still a great game. Yeah. So, uh, Damascus is a little different this year. Walkersville is very different this year, mm-hmm. but, but that's not to say the Lions don't have talent. I mean, uh, they lost 26 starters. But they have they have three seniors that, that got some playing time last year. Uh, uh, Elias Baruti, at outside linebacker, he's six uh, two, two hundred plus pounds. Uh, Alonzo Hose at, at defensive end, he's another big kid, six big kid. six feet big plus, kid. and he'll he'll, yeah. he'll he'll be at running back. And then Miles Roberts, a defensive end, mm-hmm. uh, tight end, who, uh, again, a, a good good sized kid. Those three guys got playing time last year, and they're back this year as seniors. Uh, Elias is going to be their quarterback. Um, they, uh, they, they have, um, uh, Alonzo will be there, will be there running back along with Josiah Jones. Josiah Jones uh, is very good. Yeah. yeah. And so Walkersville is going to be pretty good. I mean, they're, they're, they they're, their schedule is not one of the tougher ones in the county. So, so they're going to, they're going to win pr- at least probably seven, eight games. Seven and games. They'll probably be back in the playoffs battling, mm-hmm. knocking heads with Oakdale and, and, and Damascus again. Yeah. So. Uh, their thing, they have to get their line situated. That's what Joe said, yeah. Um, Joe they have lineman coach. bodies. It's just get that lineman mentality. So if they can get that situated, uh, I mean, they got 10 weeks to figure it out. So we'll see what happens. They and, definitely, and they, all, they always have good lines. I mean, uh-huh. they always figure it out there. So so you, you figure that that group will improve as the season goes on, mm-hmm. like like Joe Polis thinks it will. And they're they're going to be pretty good. I mean, I don't know if they beat Oakdale or Ligonor, but but that Middletown game sh- uh, should be something this year for sure. uh, with, with 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 those two schools. So, and that could be for a playoff spot uh, also in in in, Very in, much so. in, in the two A West uh, because you figure that Ligonor and Oakdale will run the table against everyone mm-hmm. except when, when 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 they when they play, or you would guess that they would. So, mm-hmm. so I, I'd, I'd look out for Walkersville this year as is a potential dark horse in in, in Class Two A. Yeah, so. I wouldn't look past them yep. yeah, at all. All right, so we're winding down here, and Kyle, we're going to put you on the spot again. Okay. Your state champions uh, for each classification. Okay. The 1A champ will be? Dunbar. They bring back a lot. They have a lot of athletes. Fort Hill lost a lot, um, and Fort Hill struggled down the stretch during that game. I don't see. Maybe Lackey's got a shot. I haven't seen them play before, but people have told me they get back a lot, and they were good last year. They took Fort Hill down to overtime, I think, and they lost on a two-point conversion. Um, so, but I have to pick Dunbar. Uh, they're they're back as uh, the supreme team in Baltimore City. Two years ago, they, they when Walkersville State Championship Public season, and in, 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 I mean, you and yeah, I saw them I was in 2016. There, right. uh, uh-huh. They were um, they gave Walkersville all they all they could handle. In Walkersville that game. Um, drew a hard count on fourth and five, I think, which pushed 
Then yeah, that was a late, it was a late game mistake. First down, down right, and yeah. they ran on they ran down the clock from there. Right, so, I think it was fourteen to six. Uh, I mean, uh, they, they, yep, they came to right, Walkersville right. and gave Walkersville all they all they could handle. Right. And, actually, it was fourteen twelve, I think, or twelve. Now yeah. was it that close? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think. And, 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 well, I, we'll have to, again, the names and the, the numbers th- sometimes escape us here. But, they did uh, lose their quarterback. Yeah. But uh, but, but, but still, but, but, but Dunbar's always a top-level yep. program in 1A. Mm-hmm. Interested to hear your answer on this one. The Class 2A champ this year is... Damascus. Damascus, yeah. Um, because... You're going to have to, but I will put uh, a little star next to that come back to me maybe week now six we're, or we're, seven. We're, we're locking you in on these preseason picks. damascus sorry um you can't bet against damascus i, I learned hard way last year um, do, do they do they trump urbana's win streak I oh mean, yeah is, is it is it, is if it more than 50 in a row if they're winning the state title this year they're going to get to 56 they're going to go 14 and 0 um now i will say well with Oakdale's case, yes, they this is their best shot at Damascus. Um, they can definitely do it. Even better than I last think year. they can. Oh yeah, this is this is the year to beat Damascus if you're Oakdale. Um, the only reason why I'm picking Damascus is Oakdale in the big game. They haven't really won the big game before. Right. So what makes me think they're going to go to Damascus and and their streak? You know, uh, Oakdale has one playoff win in school yeah. history, as good as they've been. So, can they do it? Yes, they just they they have to get over that hump. Um, but I mean, that's going to be a great game. I, I think. Um, you know, you have Oakdale with their best senior class in school history going into Damascus, who hasn't lost a home game in five years, um, and with a nationally recognize winning streak i mean that's a that's a big game um yeah. so but i got damascus just you know their line's big again they have one of the best running backs in the state uh their defense looks really good they're just a typical damascus team yeah. just wear you down run for over 300 yards a game when with tough when, when with toughness yep. right yeah yep. that's what they do all right the 3a champ will be i mentioned lincoln or lincoln or i okay. picked them last year I'm going to pick them again. Over mill for mill. Over mill for mill. I think there will be a rematch. Um, that game's going to be very close because, you know, once that game happens, I, I think mill for mill is going to come out just guns a-blazing. They're just going to be coming out, and they have that in the back of their mind from last year, that loss. Uh, for Linganore, I know I asked Coach Connor, you know, is there has there been a sense of maybe – complacency uh with kids but but no they 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 get 11 new starters this year so that's about half the team starting who really haven't been in the state championship kind of environment in terms of being on the field um so they definitely have a fresh team i guess even though they are experienced but yeah I'm picking Linganore. That'd be the first time they repeated. I'm just trying to think off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, that'd be the first time off the top of my head. Yeah. Because uh, I know that they had a chance to do it in 09 and 010, but they lost to Sherwood, I think, in 09, yeah. I think. And then they won it in 2010 with uh, Robbie and then Zach Zmanak. Right. right. But, yeah. yeah. Six, six, six day titles now for Linganore. Most in mm-hmm. Frederick County, they were tied with Urbana. Mm-hmm. Uh, at five until they went over Milford Mill last year. And the Class 4A champ, I have a feeling... Wise. Yeah. Um, I really... Well, I thought Quince Orchard would show more to me in that scrimmage, but they're going to be very run-heavy this year. And I saw Wise. They're just Their line is big and athletic. They can stop the run with ease. So it's going to be tough to move the ball on Wise. They're so good. Uh, they're athletic. They're big. Well, Vince Ahern told me that he saw Milford Mill scrimmage wise, and he said Milford Mill made wise look look small along the line. I mean, that's how big Milford Milford really? Mill is this year. Yeah. Okay. So. And then watch out for yeah. Milford. Right. Um. But yeah, I got wise. I mean, you want to stick with Linganore? Even they're with boring that piece picks. of information. I mean, it's the same. It's I the, saw Linganore. We saw it. They, yeah. I mean, Williamsport's got size. They manhandle that Clemson commit. Right. This is probably, and I texted one of my friends this. This is the best. Linganore line that I've seen since 2014. Okay. That was when they had E.J. Donahue, 
um, and a few others up front. This is the best line that I've seen since then, and they were very good. Okay. Um, so your picks sound pretty much the same. You know, mm-hmm. The one difference is, yeah. is, is in 1A, but, but, but they're all good, logical picks, though. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wanted to ask you about St. Francis, too, because everyone has them as the top, the, pub, the private school St. Francis, because everyone has them as far and away as the best overall team in Maryland, and, mm-hmm. and I think they're nationally ranked, too. Yep, top 10. Tell, tell us about them a little bit. Uh, they just got athletes all over the place. Um, Biff Poji, uh, he's built a national powerhouse down there. It's unfortunate to what's happened with them over the past few months with the MIAA schools dropping them for safety concerns. I mean, that's complete BS in my mind. But um, yeah, they've, already, they've already run won their league title. Right? They've they, did. Been, <laughs> they did. They did. I understand winning. the frustration, but get your programs better. Uh, recruit kids more, and you yeah, won't, they, and you, the you won't have. Can, can oh, recruit. that's yeah. it's like a college. You know, you right. can go out and do what you want. Uh, but Biff, he's he's got the money. He's got the resources. I mean, he coached with uh, John Harbaugh. And he's got the winning, winning tradition. Jim too. Harbaugh, yeah. sorry, yeah, uh, for a few years up in Michigan. So, and he's he has the track record. Uh, the old the math the coach Bill McGregor is there. Uh, they got the guy who runs Quarterback Factory there, Chris Basha. So, I mean, they, they have the resources. They have the staff. Uh, they don't have the schedule in place yet, but they look to be going to a national schedule next year after talking with him uh, this past summer. So, um, yeah, like when, I said. When will, you, when will you get a chance to see them? I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. I saw them scrimmage good counsel, and they put the wood to them. Um, and Good Council is a very good team. Like they're ranked number two in a state, and they beat them twenty-six nothing in a scrimmage. So, um, yeah, they're by far and wide the best team in Maryland. All right, what are you guys looking forward to the most, Joe? We'll, 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 we'll go, go around the room really quick. Oh boy, I mean, there's going to be a there's going to be a lot of scoring, uh, you know, this year. You know, we'll see how it goes. I mean, a lot of you know, for, 41 to 34 type of games. Uh, a lot of exciting football. Uh, yeah. Not not many blowouts. Uh, at least one. You know, Frederick County versus uh, Frederick County matchups. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, obviously, what everybody's looking forward to. And you you gave us the day that you know Lingonore versus Oakdale. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll see how it goes. Yep, Kyle. Lingonore versus Oakdale. Uh, that's on the top of my list. Um, and then Oakdale and Damascus. Uh, for the region championship. If the Bears win this year, if they win the whole thing, that'd be six Frederick County state champions, uh, six different teams having won football titles over the past decade. That's crazy. That is six of the ten. I mean, that's by far and wide the the, the most parity um, over the past decade in, in Maryland. Right, um, and, so, and, and you think what would happen, like in when Middletown and Walkersville were the two best teams in in the state for two A. I mm-hmm. mean, they they both couldn't get out of the region. So I mean, yeah. So each each, each of those teams could have won state titles too. There, there there were years where Frederick County teams were blocking other Frederick County teams from winning state titles. Mm-hmm. So so and then also I would like to see Middletown play Damascus in the playoffs. Uh, I think that'd be a really intriguing matchup, having two hard-nosed, oh. smash-mouth teams. Or even, Walkers- very or even Walkersville again. Or yeah. even Walkersville getting that rematch round one. Um, that's what I'm most looking forward to. Tuscora, their quarterback. Uh, I'm actually going out to the Milford Mill Tuscora game this this uh, Friday night. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. Yep. And John? Yeah, I was thinking about Tuscarora, too. I, I'm curious to see them with a freshman quarter back uh and you know they usually have skill guys good skill guys anyway mm-hmm. it could be an interesting uh not just this year but the next couple of years to see what they uh, how they want how they fare how they progress yeah and my answer will be just the quarterbacks in general because you have a nice mix of returning quarterbacks three-year starter at Catoctin um Ryan Lay is back Colin Schley is back um uh, Reese Poffenbarger is back uh, you have the new quarterback at Tuscarora so mm-hmm. I, I think there could be a really high level of quarterback play in the county yeah, this year so, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that now that you say that we have probably what four or five of the best quarterbacks in the state right like Fred- right here Frederick's quarterback is, yeah. is, is back yeah, he's so, yeah so um, he's good too an athlete so mm-hmm. so I, I the, the quarterback play in the county I, I think will be something uh, to, to, to really watch so should be fun, guys. Uh, th- th- thanks for thanks for coming in, uh, John, uh, Kyle, Joe. Uh, pr- appreciate your insights, and uh, we look forward to the start 
of the Frederick County football season. Uh, follow us on uh, Twitter. Uh, Kyle, you are at, at KFAD. Yep, at K underscore F-A-D-D. Right. Uh, John, you're at uh, J-M... Uh, what, 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 I don't twer- even know my Twitter, Twitter handle. Twitter, it's in there. Just Google uh, John, John can't... <laughs> Uh, yeah, names and Twitter handles. Uh, we we, yeah. we won't ask John. Joe, you're at, at Joe Ferraro FNP. Okay, and, and I'm at Greg underscore Swatek. So follow us along throughout the season for 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 play by play, not play by play, but 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 scoring uh, scoring updates and and final scores and and, and stories and features, and, and we look forward to, to, to documenting it all here and, and and we'll talk about it here on the final score throughout the season thanks to graham collin for producing bill green for 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 running our, our our video switcher so the facebook folks could join in i'm greg swatek of the frederick news post sports department and we'll see you next week on the final score brought to you by pfp players fitness and performance